it's just spectacularly significant and it is called the jewel box for a very right reason it is truly precious jamali kamali are associated with a gay couple it is natural for the queer community to navigate around that area it i suppose gives a certain kind of identity the lack of narratives in historiography does not mean that they don't exist from history itself so the lack of queer narratives from historiography does not mean that they're absent from history itself delhi a city so full of history that every unexplored corner here will tell you a story some such places and stories are well known and attract millions of tourists some other such places have silently established a tranquil existence with their stories whispered only among those seeking refuge one such place is the jamali kamali mosque in tum an unexplored historical gem of the city located in mehrauli's archaeological park it is said to be built in 1528 it is a historic structure from the early mughal era there is one thing that i find quite fascinating especially in context of it having some relevance with the queer community it is that you know this tomb um, is locked away you can't see it and it's a spectacular tomb you know if you were to actually look at the glazed tiles at the floral motifs at the sunbursts at the 16 verses surrounding it and as madhavi menon has talked about it alongside many other scholars that out from outside it's a single story building it's very simple from the outside it's flat right but if you go inside and you look up it's a doom and that's spectacular and it's locked away and i guess in many ways it has that experience of um privacy or secrecy or this idea that well you wouldn't know how fabulous this thing is from the inside and what you see from the outside is not enough so i think in that ways it's just spectacularly significant and it is called the jewel box for a very right reason it is truly precious when you come across these historical sites there is of course the intended meaning right for what it was constructed who constructed it what are the, what is the larger significance of the monument but there's a meaning that we give to the site in our process of meeting it in our in our process of engaging with history it's a way in which we sort of understand these medieval ancient remains in very modern contexts the mosque gets its name from a sufi saint and poet sheikh jamali kambo popularly known by his pen name jamali who lived during the lodhi and early mughal era and while the identity of kamali is not documented many believe that the inscriptions inside the locked tomb are indicative of the relationship between jamali and kamali what i would place uh, importance on this is that this is the voice of the common man that this is the voice of people who are gathering around this tomb this is the voice of people who are embracing queer love and then uh, you know uh, it's a it's a emotional sentimental space the geography becomes full of emotion and in an emotive gesture they write poetry so this poetry perhaps is the zeitgeist or the the spirit of the people who have come there through the last many years In 1536 when he dies in this campaign in Gujarat his body is brought back to be buried over here and a few years later we see this other marble grave come right next to him now we know that Jamali did have a wife um however it is not her that he is buried next to because both of the marble graves have a pen box atop them which signifies that these are graves of men we do not know who kamali is and if you come inside and you know you read a plaque that is right placed right next to the gate of the entrance you would notice how it says that the identity is unknown and numerous ideas from the last few years have circulated about who kamali could have been one of them have of course been that he was a disciple you know he was a murid uh then there is also this idea that he might have been his brother uh there is this uh, idea that he might have been just another poet you see that there are also many other graves around the tomb of jamali and kamali and these are graves of people who wanted to be buried in the presence of jamali since he was a sufi so the idea of this person also being another poet another person trying to gain that sort of blessing of jamali has also been there 
But the other oral tradition um, that has found sort of resonance with the queer community is that Kamali was his lover. And this is also not at odds with them being perhaps teacher and disciple, as Madhavi Menon explores this in her book on Infinite Variety. She opens up the book with a chapter on Jamali and Kamali, and she explores the complicated layers of love. And therefore, these are the numerous oral traditions uh, that exist at the site. While we know so much about Jamali, Kamali's identity is wrapped in enigma. Human nature is very interesting. So when there is a myth associated about a particular thought process and since uh, Jamali, Kamali are associated with a gay couple, it is natural for the queer community to navigate around that area. It, I suppose, gives a certain kind of identity, valorizing their own relationship, bringing in a certain formality instead of you know sweeping it under the carpet or trying to hide it because there's already a certain kind of an emblem or an emblematic discourse associated around this tomb or the, the shrine that the queer community is gathering around it and trying to also say that look there was already uh, uh, there, there is already a historical narrative, a popular historical narrative which is present. And in my opinion, perhaps that's the reason why this, maybe it gives them comfort. It's a comforting space for them. It's a space of security for them. It's not a space which is, um, uh, you know, contrary to what they stand for. Um, it's not a space where they feel threatened in any way. They find comfort in that space. 